There we are after 15 hours of marathon conference, Froggy Mouth. Uh, on Froggy Mouth with the Froggy Days, we will finish on time, five minutes late, which is really good for the French, who we are, and we're not going to finish with uh, any conference. We can finish with a conference that we find extremely important. Uh, it is uh, Dr. Isabel Hugh, who is uh, here and who we've been listening to for many years. And we met her at the CPCO a few years ago. It was a pleasure for the exchange. And uh, here it was quite particular. She's a dentist in France and she's an osteopath in Canada. She's uh, an international uh, person. And she has this transdisciplinary and uh, she is for the cooperation between the various practices in the entire world in the US and in Latin America, such as in Europe. And she ch shares the propagates this philosophy so that the patient is there is not just an occlusion. We don't just treat uh, an issue, a dental issue or a function. We treat the whole patient, the in the whole um, global health of the patient in the most concrete possible means. This is why it's an ideal conference to finish this day of conferences, uh, which I found extremely interesting because it combines all approaches and in the end, it summarizes really well what every practitioner should be able to know um, concerning the language. And we're going to start with the new conference, with a live conference. Isabel, it's a pleasure to have you here amongst us. I hope you are ready. We are all ready. We are many on live. I thank you so much that you, those of you who've been there all day for the whole day, thank you. And uh, I can see some people are all connected and uh, I don't have to quote everybody. Um, thank you to all of you. It's your turn. So thank you so much, Guillaume, for this introduction because uh, thank you so much also to finish on time on such a long day, a marathon with these really uh, nice conferences. It was really interesting. It was wonderful um, to see how you live this in the entire world. So uh, to finish, uh, uh, because many things have been said in this day, and it might be very interesting to see this. I'd like to thank you and I'd like to thank all the uh, participants and all the people who were able to listen to all the conferences. I'm going uh, to um, really have a look at the history and say a big thank you because the annual history with uh, what I have learned, I have studied dentistry, but I didn't know about it. I heard about it. And then when I heard about it and I started uh, studying osteopathics, I met um, Marie Bonfoni. I started making my first steps with her and uh, this was uh, the lingual studies and I was really really happy and pleased to have her in my practice while I was suffering with my little patients and uh, I learnt with her within one day I learnt a lot more than I'd ever learnt before in the books that I had read so also I would like to give a big thank you to Beatrice Padovan we haven't spoken about her today and she also had a very atypical um um way and I learned so much about uh, her development and also about her uh, urofacial functions which was a very good understanding and integration on the level on the neurological level and Dr. Fellows uh, last but uh, with his concept of the froggy mouth who came then to reunite this whole concept of because the work of Marijuana Fournier was really incredible and uh, this was a l very elaborate with uh, the patients and with the froggy mouth we know that we can go a lot faster and that has been shown uh, along the whole day with uh, the uh, neurosciences and the comprehension uh, that we can have. So in the period where I studied it was the period where we used to uh, extract uh, the premolars and um, I like to uh, set things in their uh, context. We uh, 
talked about P. Robin today in 1923. He conceptualized uh, some things about the posture and uh, syndromes. And uh, also a Macari, uh, the investigation methods they had back then are not the same than the ones we have today, but he established a link between the nasal respiration and uh, and the palate, and he and uh, he opened the palate and uh, the uh, breathing uh, space, the rib cage, and so yes, for sure we will hear things that we have heard for the whole day. But this means that the functional aspect is uh, been recognized, recognized, and there is consensus throughout the world on all continents. And I think that this is good news because the function is uh, paramount. So now I will try to sum up. Uh, the, we have 15 minutes, so we have approximately 26 slides, and I want to show the importance of the tongue and how each practitioner can use this concept. So what systems are involved with the tongue? So we can make a list of these systems. We can also see how the tongue is important in the intra-interprofessional collaboration between different uh, um, disciplines uh, and the interprofessional collaboration with other disciplines. Um, so every therapist has known, uh, known some failures about therapeutic emphasis and this is how we learn through trial and error. So so we will have three uh, big elements. First of all, the stomatognatic system. We are going to uh, associate the cranial and facial structures. The tongue is part of the mandible, so the uh, um, so the posterior part of the crane, but it is also linked to the throat. So we have a continuity uh, between the face and uh, the throat. So we are also linked with the muscu musculoskeletal and postural system on a cervical level and endothorax level, which we meaning it is linked to uh, the spine and the posture. So that digestive uh, uh, point is uh, also important as well as the respiratory system. So these two systems are visceral systems and the neurological systems are also very important in the understanding of cra cranial nerves and froggy mouth really enhances this uh, understanding of the uh, interrelation of the, these different systems. If we stabilize our jaw with the uh, with the muscle responsible for mastication, there is a harmonization of the whole system. So we also have motor uh, aspects that uh, uh, we have to take into account. And there's also the um, fine sensitivity of the tongue. So the tongue is a global system. Then another uh, system that is implicated is the behavioral and environmental system. Here we are going to study the power functions and the BPS model and the different functions that are linked to the, the tongue. So throughout this day, uh, we have seen that the lingual behavior uh, the lingual behavior is closely related to the space for the tongue in the oral cavity. However, the tongue posture is related to the type of breathing and the type of breathing is related to the posture. So a patient that breathes from the mouth and the other one from the nose don't have the same posture because they are not activating the same breathing structures. 
So the body is going to try to work with uh, the less energy possible. So the uh, lingual rehabilitation is uh, uh, essential for health. If we don't take care of the tongue, there will be consequences on the local plan. We saw it this morning with autodensy. So uh, in a, assisting the swelling, for example, is an important step of the treatment. Uh, of course, there are tests involved. Um, the chronology has been well explained in the previous lecture. We are going uh, to analyze the lingual dysfunction, uh, the breathing dysfunction, and uh, the tongue is named the conformator of the mouth. Uh, so if the so this is an important element of the treatment in Japan. In, Jap in Japan, there is a very important work from Etsuko called Muscle Wins, and on the functional level, it is a very important study regarding the tongue. It is also important for health. And uh, regarding craniomandibular dysfunctions, um, when there is a problem uh, with a swallowing, swallowing, sorry, there is a hypertonia of the muscles around the jaw and we can have chronic uh, pain around the jaw and we won't be able to improve the, con the articulation conditions if we don't uh, treat the tongue, if we don't take care of the tongue. So for people who have atypical uh, swallowing, uh, we uh, use froggy mouth. So I personally use it for my patients. If there is an absence of mandibular, the tongue will try to... Um, to take that space, that open space. So it's not only the tongue, it's the whole uh, heolingual complex that's going to move towards the empty space on the on a lateral plane. And this has an influence on the uh, articulation. So here, for example, this is a patient who had a uh, a pain, muscular pain. So uh, she had chronic pain. And as you see, this is a case of either surgery or autodensity. It's not, uh, I cannot decide which one, but in order to um, relieve this patient, we decided to do, to have an osteopathy approach. And we used froggy mouth to help her to better direct her tongue. Of course, breath awareness and, post and tongue posture awareness, as well as swallowing awareness are part of the treatment. And we had a reduction, a, signific a significant reduction of pain. Another essential element, if the tongue is not being treated with the power functions, we also know and other uh, speakers talked about it. Uh, they talked about sleep apnea and it is uh, correlated to bruxism and obstructive sleep apnea. So as dentists and osteo osteopaths, we are confronted to bruxism. So we cannot work on these elements, bruxism and sleep apnea, if we don't work on the tongue. So regarding post-surgical approach and after maxillofacial surgery, the tongue can represent an issue. So uh, after surgery, uh, maxillofacial surgery, there can be a lingual uh, problem. And the education, rehabilitation of the tongue will be needed. And I often use froggy mouth to, uh, to do that and improve the muscular situation. Regarding bruxism, uh, there are interesting studies and research 
So it is, the bruxism is a complication of a typical swallowing. So we cannot treat that uh, problem if we don't take care of the tongue. So Maria Clotilde Cara and uh, Miss Yoon and um, Dr. Levine uh, made a study about bruxism and the link with uh, sleep apnea. So in this case, again, we can use a froggy mouth. So uh, here uh, we are uh, seeing some pictures about bruxism and we know that the power functions are uh, related. This In this conference, I led, I tried to uh, gather all the information we had and I can give you the direct link to this webinar if you are interested. So here are many indications to show that we cannot ignore the tongue. If we ignore the tongue, there will also be a link with a speech therapist. Uh, so the respiratory system, especially by uh, with children uh, in osteopathy, uh, naturopathy, we have uh, uh, practitioners that um, uh, treat uh, four-year-old kids, and the na nasal hygiene hygiene starts at four years old, but some are also working with younger kids as early as three months old. And regarding phonation, we need a, a diaphragm that is not obstructed. So that work, the speech therapy and respiratory therapy are linked. Then another general consequence if we are not including the tongue in the treatment, is the cervicodorsal hinge and trapezius belt musculature. So a patient with an atypical swallowing is going to activate uh, the muscle. And sometimes it is possible to see that the child, every time they swallow, is going to contract the neck. So there are big tensions uh, around the uh, trapezius uh, and this is linked to an anterior posture. So it is not possible to relax the uh, trapezius in this condition. Furthermore, the jaw linked to uh, the tongue have a link with the endothorax. So we also have a central, uh, a central area. So the tongue is also associated with the cranial, the cranial base. So oh, we are working on the structure of the functions, the structures of the swallowing, of the breathing. And we put emphasis on the cranial base. So we're talking about the occiput. So the upper, uh, the uh, upper cervical structures and the bases of the phenoid. And these are structures that we are well known uh, amongst orthodentists. We also talk about the digestive system. We heard uh, today about chewing and a hypotonic tongue influences the quality of food chewing. So these, for example, are kids that are not going to chew their food well, and it will have a negative impact on digestion. So uh, swallowing and chewing are, of course, uh, interrelated functions. And here you see the characteristics of a teenager who reaches the end of her uh, orthodontic treatment. 
So uh, if you look closer, you see uh, that uh, there is an ins that there is an incisive uh, an incisive missing, an incisor missing. So you can see the change, uh, of course, at the this young girl uh, felt uncomfortable at the beginning. Um, he, there was a recidive and no doctor told her about her swallowing before and this is a shame that the functional aspects had not been identified. And then here you see her posture, you see her anterior posture and the impact on her trapezius. So a bit earlier I told you about the central chain. So this is not a differentiated uh, uh, chain, but here you have an ex extract of two uh, books. So here on the left, you see that at the basis of the crane, um, there is the pharynx and it is linked to the mandible. Uh, the top of the osseoid and uh, if you go down the pharynx you see the different structures of the throat and uh, here at the bottom there is a link with the pericardic uh, system and at the right you have um, the pericardium that is linked uh, to the upper cervicals. So here there is a continuity in this chain that is uh, interrelated by the breathing. So we have a continuity here between the different di diaphragm. So uh, the mandible and this uh, lingual complex uh, uh, are linked to this whole central chain. So dia mandible diaphragm at the top and uh, you go down until the pelvic floor. So to have a normal and efficient breathing and have a, a right lingual posture, you need um, to have the whole central chain to be balanced. So we cannot only work on the relaxation of the muscular system, we have to take into account the whole chain. So here is an article that uh, I like a lot. I'm sorry, it is difficult. I always have difficulties pronouncing the name of this author. But for this author, breathing is the first function that needs to be highlighted. And for him, there is a link between the SNB, ungulation, and a, a kyphotic uh, posture. So you can read this article, it is very interested. So this interprofessional, intra-professional collaboration is evident. We are all impacted by bruxism, especially in the current period with the masks that we have to wear all day long. So many uh, uh, patients uh, complain about bruxism. For general dentists, uh, the tongue can be an issue, especially for the removable prosthesis. And the practitioner has also to play a role in the identification of bruxism, especially with patients who also suffer from sleep apnea. Regarding paradentology, the tooth, uh, the tongue can push on the tooth and uh, and create tooth mobility. Dentists also have uh, to detect uh, certain elements, uh, taking into account mouth growth and pedi pediatric uh, orthodontics. 
So it is possible to uh, diagnose this uh, with, uh, with children. So uh, regarding uh, pedo pedodontists, uh, they are working with the children that are younger and younger, uh, thank God. And, but they are also, and orthodontists also treat adults and we have to take the tongue into account for these patients too. Regarding occlusodontists, we saw the relationship between the tongue and the craniomandibular disorders. And regarding stomatologists and maxillofacial surgery and oral surgery, we saw that there is also a link there, especially um, after surgery. So there is uh, a lot to be done there regarding the respiratory function, the chewing symptom uh, functions, as well as the swallowing functions. Now regarding the interprofessional collaboration, medical doctors are on the front line and sometimes they are not well aware of these elements, but they have a role to play regarding the diagnosis. Uh, of uh, sleep apnea uh, regarding digestive pathology that are often linked to bruxism. And then uh, they are also an important element with respiratory pathology. We talked about this today. They have to find mechanical obstruction or allergies and treat them. Uh, and then uh, pediatrics also have a role to play regarding uh, the breathing in toddlers. And radiologists are also an important component uh, for additional uh, testing. Regarding the interprofessional collaboration, the osteopath is my uh, favorite uh, tool. Uh, this is what I developed most. Uh, the osteopath can work on the cranial muscular organ and check all the different functions in order to have a better uh, freedom of the tissues and functions. Uh, Another important role is the one played by speech therapists. They are specialized in lingual re rehabilitation. Osteopaths cannot uh, do some tests. And that's why a speech therapist play an important role. Then we have specialized physiotherapists who can be uh, specialized in maxillofacial rehabilitation and it is a pleasure to work with them. Other uh, therapists are physiotherapists who can work on postural education. Then regard neuromotor coordination. I think about uh, psychomotricians and occupational therapists who can uh, improve the neuromotor development uh, of children, for example. At one point in my studies, I was interested in the different uh, exercises that can be done by children in order to improve the understanding and the integration of um, the, fun the different functions. Um, and this raises awareness. Um, in some cases, a psychologist can be indicated and posturologists can also integrate tongue posture uh, with the treatment of the general posture. And now I want to uh, also salute a traditional Chinese medicine um, because uh, Ch Chinese doctors are going to check the color and shape of the tongue. And uh, thanks to that, they have a very accurate picture of the digestive system. So as you can see, Lots of professionals are uh, implicated and have a role to play. The patient, of course, is, has also to be involved in order to encourage somatic awareness. 
it is important to have uh, the integration through movement, through breathing, and the active participation of the patient. Here, this is a case. Uh, this is an adult uh, class three. And here there is a lingual push, an important lingual push, and a uh, wonderful orthodontic uh, treatment has been made in Montreal in this case. And the patient also worked a lot uh, on their tongue in order to improve their situation. Here you see um, the scan uh, from before and after. And we see that there is a structural improvement here. So, um, what uh, we have to understand in our diagnosis is a global thinking. As I said, I like osteopathy as my favorite tool, but we can integrate other uh, profession professionals. We have to have a holistic approach with a global vision of the body. We don't we should not stay to in the mouth with the testing and diagnosis, but take into account the whole body. If there is a differentiated di diagnosis, of, it is important uh, to be in contact with the different professionals. <laughs> the importance of structures has also been uh, acknowledged earlier. So it is important to have the maximum of information available. And today we have tools that allow us to work on the tongue in an efficient way. And the myofunctional ed passive uh, education is an excellent tool. It is extremely efficient. It, it is time-saving. It is a gain in motivation. Patients love it. It works for children. It works for with adults. And it is also a tool for more autonomy. It is a tool of communication. So it, everything goes faster uh, with this passive myofunctional approach. And the neurological aspects are, of course, evident uh, when we are adults. When the adult swallowing uh, is integrated, we have to do it uh, with uh, the teeth uh, uh, with uh, so this lingual education is not an option. Uh, it is necessary in different uh, areas like osteopathy and others that I mentioned. It is important to understand the the relevance of the functions and to uh, detect it uh, early on. So uh, the complementarity uh, diagnostic is important and the patient awareness is also important for the rehabilitation. Uh, I wanted to especially thank you. I was looking at the chat and I have to say that more than questions, there is especially uh, a lot of uh, thinking, a lot of rewards, a lot of people that are thanking you for what you were saying, for what you were telling us. I was seeing people from Europe, from America, from North America, from South America, and everybody was especially appreciating uh, your work, your presentation. If people have questions that I was not seeing in the chat, but for a moment, not the case, you can ask them, as we were saying, on the Facebook group, and if you want more information about the work of Isabel, we were putting on the chat the link of her webinar about bruxism that I am everybody highly advising you to go check out and see or uh, to watch the webinar uh, by itself. It was a great lecture. Thank you so much, Isabel. It was the most Merci. perfect way to finish this Congress. Pleasure to have you amongst us. Uh, much to you, Isabel, and thank you very much, Isabel. Thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure for me as well. Thank you, thank you. It was brilliant. Thank you.